Hello, Catadactyl here. Uh, today I'm doing the review for Demian by Herman Hess. Okay, so Herman Hess is one of my favorite writers of all time. Uh, one of my favorite books is Narcissus and Goldman by Herman Hess. And so I was really, really looking forward to this. It is amazing. It is really, really, really good. When you're first introduced to him, he's open to everything, but he realizes that there is goodness in the world. His family is very religious and very wholesome and pure, and that there's this other side of the world. Like, he talks about the butcher shop and fighting and drinking and this whole other world where he doesn't know because he's young, but he knows like he will have to fight it eventually. And that frisson between them happens when his sexuality starts to come to the fore. So after that, after that period, he goes on a journey of uh, self-discovery. In school, he's being picked on until one student named Demian, who's kind of this mystical, awe-inspiring, we all look up to him figure, somehow saves him and is never really sure how he did so except that he says he willed it into being and then it became. So he's kind of imbued with some sort of higher power than Sinclair has himself. And Sinclair becomes kind of obsessed with Demian and he has dreams about him where he's both male and female. Demian in Sinclair's mind is more often a dream than reality. They don't, I don't believe that they're together that much in actual reality, but in the dreams it's so strong and so present like every night that they bond through that. And when he's struggling with finding out who he is and good and light and dark and evil, one of the things that Demian says to him is that what is forbidden in your mind, so what you have categorized as dark, is totally up to interpretation because everyone's own viewpoint makes something else forbidden. So if everyone around the world has different viewpoints, then every different thing that is forbidden will be different. So here's just a quote from that. So it says, What is forbidden, in other words, is not something eternal. It can change. That is why each of us has to find out for himself what is permitted and what is forbidden. Forbidden for him. So from this moment on in the book, Sinclair is on a journey to find out what he believes is good and what he believes is bad and what the purpose of his life is, like what the purpose of being alive is. So then he goes to a boarding school and he is separated from Demian. And instead, he ends up meeting a musician, an organist. Together, they talk about mystical things again. One of the coolest things in the book was the idea of Abraxas. So Sinclair has this vision and he decides to paint it and it's a bird, like a gold yellow hawk, struggling out of an egg. And he sends it to Demian, and he receives a note back that says, The world is an egg. You first must break the world, break out of the egg, to be free and to be yourself. So that idea carries through throughout the whole book. Um, it manifests in different ways. And it's also the idea of Abraxas. He is considered a being, a deity, that contains all the good and all the dark together. He's the one being that entertains both your good thoughts and all of your bad thoughts. So he's described the following way in the book. Our God's name is Abraxas, and he is God and Satan, and he contains both the luminous and the dark world. Abraxas does not take exception to any of your thoughts, any of your dreams. Never forget that. But he will leave you once you've become blameless and normal. Then he will leave you and look for a different vessel in which to brew his thoughts. So basically the idea of Abraxas is giving power to the idea of being different and not being normal and not giving into what everyone else is doing. Which is something else that Sinclair struggles with in school because he says, Everyone is going to the bar, everyone is studying, everyone's trying to be a good student, and he's just trying to find out why we're alive, what's going on, what are we doing here on Earth. So Abraxas also leads him to the idea that inside yourself there is also so much good and so much evil. So he describes it like this, Every god and devil that ever existed, be it among the Greeks, Chinese, or Zulus, are within us. 
exist as latent possibilities, as wishes, as alternatives. I just thought that was such a cool idea, like, all the gods and all the possibilities, all the wishes you could have, have existed and exist within you still. Um, so this book is just really lovely. It talks about good and evil and it really explores what it means to be your own person. Um, and of course there is like mysticism thrown in here and then the ending just blew me away. I didn't really know where the book was going after about two thirds in. I was like, anything could happen. And you know like when you get down and you're like, oh sh there's like 40 pages left. Oh, what's happening? Oh, there's 20 pages left. What is happening? What is gonna happen? And then the last two pages, I seriously just want to frame them and put them on my wall. Just the whole book was so philosophical and mind-blowing and just got me thinking about all these different things. And then the last two pages just sledgehammered to the feels. So good. And it wrapped up everything. He is a master of the craft. I love Herman Hess and I highly recommend this book. So if you have read this book, if you've read any of his other books, let me know. Or if you don't agree and you didn't like it that much, let me know. I would love to talk about it because I thought everything in this book was really awesome and super fun to talk about. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this review and I hope that you read this book because it's really awesome. Okay, thanks for watching. See you. Bye.